Hello and welcome everyone. This is the Warhamster of the Old School Gaming Co. And we are taking you on a deep dive into the world of Returnal in this video. Now, what is Returnal? I guess would be a good question. Well, first off, it is an exclusive to the PS5, developed by Finnish studio Housemark. Some of the previous games that they've worked on have also been for Sony consoles exclusively primarily since the PlayStation 3 era with games like Super Stardust HD, Resogun, and Alienation. Returnal feels like true AAA evolution of the ideas that were put forth in Alienation and is also the first AAA roguelike. We've seen a lot of roguelikes in the indie circuit, but we've never seen one given the full budget of a AAA game, and that is exactly what Housemark was given the money by Sony to make. This is also the first truly exclusive AAA experience that you can find. The only thing that would come close to being this exclusively AAA, I would say, would be the medium, as it is available exclusively to higher-end PCs, and the Xbox Series X. But outside of that, Returnal is it. And as we mentioned, it is a AAA roguelike shooter. So what does that mean? Uh, it means that you can be sure that you will die a lot in this game. And each time you die, you will be sent back to the beginning of the game. Most of your items will be taken from you, except for a few permanent unlocks that you get to keep and you can experiment with different builds throughout the world as you try to make it to the end. And each time you make it through, the uh, game resets the map and gives you a procedurally generated areas. Uh, you will explore through six biomes. You can pick up a total of 10 weapons plus a melee weapon, which is a lot of fun to use, as well as a couple of other neat gadgets like a hook shot to help Celine out on her journey along the way. And you play as Astra Scout Celine Vassos, who has been drawn to the mysterious planet of Atropos in pursuit of a strange alien signal that tells you, do you hear the white shadow? A message that seems to have a deep resonance with Celine. And this begins one of the three central mysteries of Returnal as we try to figure out what the white shadow signal is and how it drew Selene to Atropos. Now, upon entering Atropos's atmosphere, Selene's ship is damaged and she crashes on the planet and very soon discovers that she is stuck in a time loop. One of the best descriptions of this game I heard, which was on uh, Fightin' Cowboys live stream, shout out to him, was that this game is Aliens meets Groundhog Day. And it very much is that, as you will be repeating the same events, and the story will also factor that in as Selene is caught in time loop. This also brings Returnal into that rare echelon of roguelikes that share a space with Hades as one that puts its story first. And though Returnal doesn't put its story as far ahead of everyone else as Hades does, it does at least give you a gripping narrative with some key mysteries of what happened to Selene's past, why is she here, and what happened to the alien race known as Sentients that inhabited Atropos seemingly thousands of years prior. So it's an interesting title, and of course, as it is a shooter, combat is front and center in this game, and with the SSD, causing zero to little load times, it is actually a great feeling to play a roguelike where you are thrust into the thick of it right away as soon as you die with maybe a few seconds to relive a smash cut of the crash before Selene wakes up and starts all over again. So with the pistol, like I'm seeing from the footage here, the pistol, when you're shooting, do you actually find that there is critical points that you're actually hitting on whenever you're shooting at them? Well, funny enough, the game says there are uh, weak points because as I've done the daily challenges that unlock after you beat the first boss, one of the multiplier scores you get is for hitting weak points. However, I don't really notice them. 
Uh, now that said, the pistol actually can be a very versatile weapon, but because one of the great things about it is that for anyone who's played Borderlands 2 or 3, Selene's sidearm acts kind of like a Jacob's pistol, in by which I mean it will fire as fast as you can pull the trigger. And also, if you do notice where the weak points might be on certain enemies, you can definitely precise aim if you want, because if you pull the left trigger down halfway, not all the way, but we'll get into that in a minute, but halfway, you can aim down the sights. It slows Selene's movement down a bit, but you can get precise aiming. Also, in the game's options, you can tweak the accessibility of the aim assist. It's defaulted to be medium, so you can kind of slop shot run and gun it out a little bit, but if you're trying to be precise, you get a little bit of help with those accurate shots. If you want to be a true badass, you can turn the aim assist off entirely, or if you want to focus more on running and dodging, you can uh, jack the aim assist to high and you don't have to worry about aim at all. But I was also going to say, though, there's definitely criticals as well. Like, I, when I play through, that pistol is amazing. Mm-hmm. It's like, I have, don't get me wrong, the alien weaponry is really cool to play with, but like, I would be happy if I, the one thing that would make me happier is if at any point I could switch back to my pistol. With the secondary abilities and the alt fire, it's just beautiful uh action on that it's and it's it's very what do you call that like arcade shooter like mm-hmm. you got very you gotta be very quick on your feet you're jumping you're always dodging it like it's, it's pretty fun i like what that. do you mean what do you mean by uh criticals like is there a i shoot a dog like creature in the head it takes more damage than if i shoot him in all right the, well, the okay so yeah I, 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 that's what i meant kind by the, the precision stuff okay, oh yeah yeah so, yeah the precision's yeah. all there I was and wondering if, like, the criticals, like, if you got critical multipliers and stuff like that as you move along. It, you do definitely in the daily challenges, if you do get any of those kind of multipliers in the main game, uh, beyond the adrenaline system, they aren't displayed. But uh, actually, funny enough, Johnny, what you touched on there, you can definitely come back to your pistol. You just might not do it for a while because Celine can only hold one weapon at a time. That's what um, I was about to ask. Now. Yeah, so Selene can only hold one weapon at a time, but each time you find a weapon, there are three things that can be affected, which are its three base stats, its alt fire, and its traits. The three base stats are linked to Selene's weapon proficiency, which also is a pretty interesting thing to touch on because the quality of the weapons you find is not based on how far you are in the game. It's based on your weapon proficiency stat, which is a stat that drops back to zero at the start of each run. Uh, You can find items that make it raise the bar, or you can use your guns. That's uh, really punishing. I don't uh, like... Not necessarily. It's punishing. It actually feeds into... It can be punishing, but it feeds into the game's risk-reward system, which I'll uh, touch on a little bit later. But it does mean that the more time you spend using guns in the game, the more likely you are to find guns with better stats overall, which does encourage you to not rush levels and actually take your time. The levels can be really big. And the other two things that you can tweak is the fact that the alt fire for each weapon type is randomized. So every time you pick up a weapon, it'll have a different alt fire, meaning that even if you open a chest and find a pistol and you're already carrying your sidearm, it could have a difference not only in stats, but the alt fire could be different. And then there are the weapon traits. And weapon traits are weapon-specific abilities that unlock over over use. Once they are unlocked, they are permanently unlocked and could be another random stat that appears on the gun. So, for an example, one of my favorites with the Tachyon Carbine is the Critical Hit, which is a trait that means that you have a 10% chance of your shot doing more damage than normal. Uh, Sticking with the Carbine, another trait you can unlock is Hardened, which gives the Carbine a small red shield animation that increases Selene's protection while she has that Carbine equipped by roughly 15%. And the alt fires being what they are, are also really fun. And 
you know, the alt fire actually plays in to the how the controller of the PS5 really brings another layer of next gen feeling into can, return. Can I ask you something? Because I didn't see yes. this in the video. What is horizontal barrage? Ah, okay. Horizontal barrage is one of the alt fires you can get. So if you hold the left trigger all the way down, past the point where you start getting resistance, you go from aiming down the sight to charging your alt fire. There are actually a couple of shots of the horizontal beat shot. There is actually a few clips of the uh, horizontal shot being used. It's the stream of blue shots that kind of arc in a straight line and then spread and burst out all over the place. So that would be an example of your alt fire. Another great example of the alt fire, which is one of my favorites, is the shock stream which you basically hold down the R trigger for about four seconds and you just get a complete charge of Sith lightning that irradiates everything in front of you and destroys it. And that actually, as John can tell you, can play into how the haptics truly enhance the feeling. Like John, as you, uh, as you said when, when you, you were playing. I have never had such... Like, Remember that feeling back in the day when you, you put like a cartridge in, in, a, in a system that, oh, it felt good when you clicked it in? It has that now for when I reload my pistol. I can feel it when I pull it. If it's like if I'm going really fast, I can feel that feedback immediately. And it just makes it so much. It's something I never thought or cared about and now want. So the well done. Part, but yeah, and the other cool thing about the haptics, like as we were using the shock stream as the example, which Johnny pointed out, is that the static charge rumbles the controller in a way yeah. that it gets more intense near the end of the burst to let you know that it's almost done. Yeah. And, you know, so it's... you don't have to keep looking down. There's a lot of feedback it can give you. Like, there's a lot of feedback that can be done with this where you don't have to be looking back at ga any gauges or maps or, or things like this if, mm -hmm. if they're going down this type of path. I'm just, I'm really interested to see what the future is going to, what they're going to do with this type of like, this new technology. Mm -hmm. Like, even with the alt fires, there's a specific sound that comes out of the PS4 controller and a specific rumble in the center to let you know that your alt fire is recharged if you're not paying attention to, you know, your cooldown timer in the lower left corner of your screen. There's some nice touches that they did with that. Of course, there's some fun aesthetic things with the haptics, like if you're standing in rain, you can feel the raindrops on the top of the haptics. You can feel different terrain on the bottom of the haptics. But, you know, when it comes to the gunplay, that plus how you can manipulate the adaptive triggers to aim, to switch your alt fire, you know, it adds a new layer to the experience and it frees up other buttons to be used for other mechanics but you know as we also mentioned there's a range of great weapons uh you know we've talked a little bit about this we've talked a lot about the sidearm we talked a little bit about tachyon carbine i started off absolutely hating the spit maw which is the third weapon the game unlocks and until you beat the first boss Sidearm, Carbine, and Spit Maw are the three weapons that you kind of have to work with. But I grew to love it really fast after I started unlocking a few traits, specifically the uh, Slug Shot trait. But the Spit Maw looks like the demonic version of Samus's arm cannon has attached itself to Selen. It is a living weapon that fires its young as eggs that explode and block pain receptors on enemies so that, you know, their nerve damage can't be numbed. They're constantly feeling it. It's, it's a disgusting weapon uh, in that regard, but especially when you realize that it's meant to get up in your face and pair it with the Atropian Blade melee attacks, it can become a deadly weapon, especially if you get an alt fire like Shockstream on it as well. It is great. It ended up being great for crowd control. However, it's not great in certain situations, like long-range situations, which is where, you know, you might want your uh, carbine, or you could get your um, hollow seeker, which is my personal favorite weapon. Bust one of those out. It basically does a rapid-fire spread-fire shot. Or you can use the thermogenic launcher, 
which is basically a mix between a shotgun and a rocket launcher. Uh, it is a pretty cool weapon. I had a huge amount of fun with the first trait I unlocked, which is that rockets have a sec have a chance to explode twice on hit. You know, that weapon's really cool. I haven't unlocked all the weapons because at time of recording, I've only made it most of the way through area three and I've unlocked a few other weapons. Actually, I've unlocked one other weapon, which is kind of like a damage over time poison grenade launcher, which I'm not a huge fan of. But one thing I definitely am a huge fan of is the sword, both in how it works with environmental gameplay and just how it's really nice to have it in combat because the sword does a huge amount of damage and is my go-to killer for downing sub-bosses. Like, I will basically take out my gun and fire enough shots in it to max out an enemy's stagger bar, and then as they're reeling, I will run into the mini-boss, and three sword strikes, it's dead, and I don't have to deal with, like, a huge pain in my ass when it comes to fights. And the nice thing about killing a mini-boss is they always drop a weapon, so you can uh, pick out which weapons you want. But, you know, especially, as I mentioned, weapons play a lot into the risk-reward of the game because, you know, those traits are exactly why. Say you've been using a weapon that's carried you through an area for a good long while, and you come across another weapon that you don't usually use very much, but you do like in certain situations, and it's got a trait on it that you started working on that is like 20% away from completion. So then do you take the risk of d ditching the weapon that you've got to uh, pick up this other one and finish off its trait so it'll help you later as a reward? Or do you stick with what you have, work on that later? And risk-reward is something that is peppered throughout roguelikes in general. But in Returnal, it's peppered into every layer of the game. Because the example that I just gave with weapons is a small one. Translates over to items. You can find a lot of things in the world that are corrupted by malignancy. This can range from chests to obelite crystals that you need your sword to break. And obelites are your form of currency in the game. Uh, keys for chests and doors. Or even health pickups could all be malignant. Uh, which has a chance to cause a suit malfunction. Uh, suit malfunctions are basically temporary debuffs. They will do things such as if you're standing still, you do 25% less damage with your gun. Or if you're jumping in the air, you do 50% less damage. Or you suddenly start taking fall damage. Or one of the weirdest malfunctions, in my opinion, because it is actually kind of more of an environmental hazard, is cause acid pools enemies to spawn acid pools on death you can get rid of a malfunction by using a specific requirement the other risk reward is parasites you can attach up to five parasites to selen and they can either do a they always do a positive buff and debuff at the same time and they aren't always equal so whether you want to pick up a parasite that say might give you a last chance but once you use that last chance, it detaches and causes a critical malfunction that randomly destroys one of the artifacts that could be a potentially good artifact that has carried you through your run. Those risk-reward decisions start to become pretty hairy. The last major risk-reward in the game is something we actually touched on, and that's the level progression of the game. You know, the first level is pretty big. All the levels are big, but if you want to go through the entirety of the first map, you're looking at an average 40 minutes before you hit the first boss. Now, once you've hit the first boss, you unlock the second level, and the option to say, you know what, I just want to go right to the Crimson Wastes. So you can do that, but you're going to have a lower weapon proficiency, you're going to have less health upgrades, you're going to have less artifacts, it's going to be a much tougher time. Alternately, when you unlock the Citadel, a path opens up from the first level so you can bypass levels one and two and jump right to level three. At that point, they're nice enough to drop an item that will automatically bump your proficiency level up to nine or 10, but you still have to deal with that health penalty of all the health pickups that 
HP extension pickups that you missed in levels one and two. So there's a lot of risk reward factors that play into every aspect of the game. And uh, that's a really interesting thing. Moving on to technical, uh, the game runs at a almost solid 60 frames per second. Uh, what makes it truly impressive though, is that in my play, I have not seen it drop below 50. And it also makes full use of all of the ray tracing and lighting effects and bells and whistles that both Demon Souls and Miles Morales make you choose for. Because with Demon Souls, Miles Morales, you can do fidelity mode or you can have it looking a little bit less good, but with none of the ray tracing, any of that, and running at 60 frames. Returnal lets you do both, and it doesn't make you have to choose between a fidelity mode and a performance mode. Its fidelity mode is its performance mode, and God does it look beautiful. Lighting effects are amazing. Particle effects, which is something that Housemark is known for, are on full display, and it is a dazzling light show whenever you get into combat, especially when there are hundreds of bullets raining down on you from absolutely everywhere. Um, the frames per second, does it reach actually 120? No, it's max out at 60 and 60? it runs primarily at 60. The way that the foliage reacts to you in certain instances and just how the game is lit and variety in both enemy design and level design, there is enough eye candy in Returnal to keep anyone from getting bored and with a runtime the length that Returnal has it's a good thing that it has that variety in terms of its weapons its level design its level themes and its creature design as well so one of the things i wanted to ask you and i don't know if you'd notice this but when i was editing the video i couldn't help but notice how similar the running the jumping and the boosting especially the boosting the it, it to me the returnal looks like the more polished version of mass effect andromeda <laughs> you get a really nice play like as i'm watching you just go through the different jumping and how you're actually able to clamber on stuff and what the jumps are and in the video here we're showing it as well you can see how the boosting is actually working it's disturbingly similar you know, it's funny you mention that. Like, I would say that, yeah, it looks like a lot of the dev team at Housemark are in the same camp as you, as they think that Mass, Andro Mass Effect Andromeda may have been a little bit overlooked in some of its beauty, because though Celine does not have resting glitch face, she does move very similarly to the character models in Mass Effect Andromeda. In fact, I, I remember when I watched... Yongye's review of Returnal, he even mentioned that basically take the bullet hell shooting of Alienation, the map from Metroid Prime, and the jump pack from Mass Effect Andromeda, and you have one hell of a great shooter. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but yeah, from that point on, like, even I was like looking at it going like, yeah, that really is the jump pack out of Mass Effect Andromeda. But until you put together that little side-by-side -side comparison, it didn't actually click to me that the uh, like the motion of her run, the motion of her jump, the way she lands, even the sound effect of the of the uh, dash boost is eerily similar. But you know, imitation is a fine form of flattery. So there you go. Hey, if you're gonna do it, do it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you, Hamster. But I, I gotta say, I'm not 100%. I look at this as not quite risk reward. This is a little different, and this is why I think I'm a little different on this game. I don't see this as a true. This feels more like risk management, if that makes <laughs> sense. I don't like. No, a lot of the time the things. It, it's like the best I can do at because I'm just playing a ton of it right now. Imagine all the boons you got on a run of Hades were chaos boons, and they come with this negative you got to deal with for a while. Okay, that would mm -hmm. be rough. This is essentially what you, a lot of the stuff you're going to be getting, where it's you, you learn to basically anticipate what mutagen or what um, oh the parasite can do for you. The thing about it in Hades is that 
you don't know kind of what you're getting. I don't know if it's the same thing in maternal. Like it is when you when you walk up to the parasite, do you have any visual recognition of what you might be getting into, or oh, yeah. is it, it like tells, oh, yeah, you can straight up it tells you, you like, like it tells you exactly after what the first it's one be. that you pick up every time you walk up to a parasite. It tells you exactly what the risk reward you get for picking it up, what the buff and the debuff you're getting for picking it up is. So, so that's an you know, advantage that's... that's that's different than than the chaos yeah. gate because in the chaos gate, as soon as you go like once you mm-hmm. opt to, to to sacrifice the health, you, you have to you make have one of three choices. But from my understanding is is that when you enter the chaos gate, you've got one of three choices. You got to choose one, and yep. they might all be shit. Yep. And this is actually where I would say that on the surface, it could definitely appear like risk management in the way that uh, Johnny was saying, but um, it actually isn't because you always have the option to not pick up the malignant health and wait till you find some good health. You always have the option to see what the parasite will do and decide whether it's worth for you to pick it up or not. You always have the option to bypass picking up anything malignant if you want, as long as you have the skill to potentially deal with having shittier gear and lower health for a bit longer. So if you have that skill, you can do it, because I can guarantee you there are already videos out on on YouTube of no hit runs with no upgrades. If it hasn't been done yet, someone's already working on, on uh, on the Twitch challenge for it. That's why I I worked the levels into the same idea of risk reward because you know at that point the reward is time saved. The risk is do you have the skill to save that time, or just to cut your losses and bring back to your next turn that helps you, like yep. your increased life or whatever. Exactly. Maybe even the checkpoints in the game that you can find the reconstructors are risk reward because do you spend that six ether or do you then surprise yourself by being so good that you went to the next area and that reconstructor you can no longer access because you're out of that area and effectively wasted that six ether which is a rare commodity in the game or did you need it did it just save you from death you know Risk and reward is baked into Returnal. And though at the start it can seem like risk management, it really is not. And it really does play into the brilliance of how Returnal walks that line of being incredibly tough, but still very fair. One of the things that I think we really should allay everybody's uh, feelings about is it really has a next-gen price point. It's really the first game that we've seen that actually is... It is the next gen price point. Yeah. And yes. the thing I, is, that the that... price hits us hard. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel that because don't don't fool yourselves. Uh, paid eighty for Mass Effect, so yeah, that's the that's the new price point. I got a discount because EA Play, but I'm paying the new price point, and that hurt. So I totally understand people actually backing off from that. Um, one of the things I'd have to say is that, guys, with a roguelite, one of the nice things is that you can just sit down and do a run. I would like them to include the ability for you to be able to exit out because you got shit to do, but you can just do a run. You don't mm-hmm. have to worry about the long-term consequences of your play because you always got another run, and that's the that's the magic for a roguelite. Exactly, and that kind of really touches on the few negatives that I would say legitimately exist for Returnal and the normally I'm not one to say that price is an inhibitive factor but when you have a game that is a combination of a very high and unforgiving difficulty at times with combined with the fact that you're looking at an average five to six hour run and the only way you can save your progress and walk away from it is putting your console in rest mode and hoping that you remember to turn off auto updates. Because if that auto update comes and your PlayStation resets, you lost that run, you have to start again, even if you were four hours in. The other major issue that currently Housemark is aware of is that the game does have a couple of pretty critical bugs. As of the time of this recording, I personally have not experienced it with my playthrough, 
but there have been hard crashes and error crashes that have crashed people's games. It can be really infuriating, again, when your game is that long. One bug that did affect me is Returnal's notorious audio glitch. Now, thankfully, I didn't get the one with the big bass bomb because as I play with headphones, that would have killed my ears and maybe broken my headphones. However, I did get the audio glitch where the sound cuts completely from the game. And the only way to fix it is to close the app, kill your run, and start again. And, you know, that happening to me on a run where I had gotten the farthest and was doing the best that I ever had really hurt. But it's not going to stop me from playing it because, you know what, high price point be damned and uh, high difficulty be damned. This is a great game. And I personally love games with a challenge. Souls likes and roguelikes are already my jam. And with Returnal, Sony and Housemark have done a very interesting thing. They have now, with Returnal and Demon's Souls, put out an exclusive title for the PS5 that attempts to take a niche genre and thrust it into the mainstream. And it does a damn good job. I personally would highly recommend Returnal to anyone, and if you are looking for that killer app for the PlayStation 5, even amidst a crowded launch cycle that sees Resident Evil Village already around, Mass Effect coming next week, and Ratchet and Clank coming next month, look at it this way. Mass Effect aside, because that's three games, and they're all really long, when you're done with the 12 hours that it takes to beat Resident Evil Village, when you're done with what will probably be the 40 hours that takes to beat Ratchet and Clank, you have countless hours of Returnal to play until the next great game comes out. And if you can hack the difficulty, you'll find something that it looks gorgeous, plays pretty much immaculately, and has an intriguing mystery that is one interesting onion to peel the layers back. Oh my god, we didn't even talk about the astronauts!